On behalf of the Town of Yarmouth and Barnstable County, uh, my name is Mark Forrest. I am chairman of the Board of County Commissioners, and I am a selectman here in the Town of Yarmouth. And I want to welcome Governor Healy, Secretary Augustus, and all our distinguished guests, including our members of our Cape and Islands legislative delegation. Um, before I introduce the governor, I just need to make a few comments about what we have seen today. Um, you know, these homes that we are visiting are a result of a very collaborative effort involving a large number of people and organizations. And in addition to the developers, I need to really commend the hard work of the folks here in the town of Yarmouth, our town administrator, our town staff, our affordable housing trust, our housing coordinator, Mary Wagan. Where are you, Mary? Wave your hand. Give, give a shout out to Mary, everybody. She works round the clock in Yarmouth for affordable housing. If every town had a Mary Wagon, we'd be in a much better position, trust me. So we also have a lot of support from our planning board and uh, town staff. Um, and obviously the message here is it takes teamwork uh, to make these projects reality. Uh, let me also acknowledge we have several members from the Yarmouth Board of Selectmen. Our chairman, Mike Stone, is here, Mike, and uh, Peter Q. Smith is here. Am I missing anybody else from our board? Affordable housing has been a, an important priority of the board, and under Mike's leadership, we've made great strides in the past few years. So uh, recently, it's, it's safe to say that we, for the past five years, we've created literally 200 and more uh, affordable housing units. We've also have before our town meeting an article to expand our accessory dwelling unit bylaw. Uh, for those of you who might not know, at our last town meeting, we approved almost unanimously a $207 million wastewater initiative that not only protects the environment, but creates critical infrastructure to meet our affordable housing challenges. So here on Cape Cod, as everyone knows, wastewater infrastructure and affordable housing go hand in hand. And uh, let me also make a Another point, that to make this all happen, we need active partners at the state level. We need state government. We need a governor that's committed to making this a priority. We need a legislative delegation, which we have, uh, that makes this a priority. We're very lucky here in Yarmouth to have literally at the very top to the very bottom significant support and leadership making affordable housing uh, a priority. And I think it's safe to say that when Governor Healy came into office, she demonstrated literally on day one a firm commitment to work with Yarmouth and all the communities here in the Commonwealth to make this a priority and to help us meet these challenges. She's laid out an ambitious agenda to meet the affordable housing challenges in the Commonwealth, and we are so lucky, we are so fortunate to uh, welcome Governor Maura Healy. And so please join me in welcoming Governor Healy. Thank you. Oh. Well, hey, it is, uh, well, it's great to be on the Cape. It is really great to cross the bridge. I've crossed the bridge many times, as has Lieutenant Governor uh, Kim Driscoll, who sends her regards to all of you. I want each and every one of you to know how much our administration uh, values and supports our communities around the state and understands the particular needs unique to the Cape. Um, because they are unique and they're challenging. And as a team, and this truly is a wonderfully reflective team, um, this is a team that is assembled right now to meet the moment. And I want to thank Mark um, uh, for, uh, for his kind words. I want to thank uh, Mike Stone, all the members of the select board who were here, to Bob Rittenauer. Um, I want to thank um, you for what where you're back there hiding. Uh, <laughs> I, I just want to... Uh, to, to Jim, um, our developer, um, it's just so exciting all of what's going on uh, here and what this what this ref, what this reflects. To um, our other friends, Elisa Magnata, thank you so much. We stood with you and others from Housing Assistance. I don't know when was it back months ago. Yeah. I don't know five months June. ago. Hey, Paul. June. June. All right, not that long ago, and we were down here, and we were down here talking about housing and the need to do everything we can to supercharge the production of housing on the Cape. Now it's where around the state, but certainly on the Cape. And so 
It's really cool to be back here today to celebrate what's happened here through the work of Jim Perrine and others um, to make this Yarmouth Gardens possible. So I want to, um, to say that. I also want to acknowledge Paul uh, Nizwicki from the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce and members of the business community. We know this is an issue big time when it comes to our businesses, our workforce, right? Um, you know, it's great people want a vacation here, but you know, there are a lot of people who work really damn hard to make sure that that's possible and who have lived here for a long time and want to continue to live here and see their kids live here, but you know, have been priced out. And so we know it is, um, it's an imperative on so many levels that we get after this. Um, it's great to be with our colleagues in, in the legislature. You know, we were able to do some special stuff already this year. We got a great budget with important investments for housing. We got a tax package that's going to do significant things and help us with affordability, making life more affordable. And um, with their support, we'll get this bond bill done on housing. And I just want to thank my colleagues, starting with Senator Julian Sear, Representative Kip Diggs, Representative Chris Flanagan, Representative Dylan Fernandes. Um, also, we have representatives from, from Leader Peak's office as well. Thank you all for your continued partnership and commitment. And then the star of our show, our administration, our Secretary of Housing, Ed Augustus, is here as well. And I want to thank Ed. You know, until our administration came along, we didn't have a Secretary of Housing. We did not have a Secretary of Housing, but we recognized how important it was to make sure we had a cabinet member who was solely focused on housing around the state. And we're lucky. We recruited Ed. He's here. And today we'll talk a little bit about the fruits of his work. Um, as I say, it's wonderful to be here in Yarmouth and to be here at Yarmouth Gardens in particular. We're so proud as a state that you know, there were state programs that played a role in helping make this development possible. It's, um, and that's alongside tremendous local support, in particular the Yarmouth Affordable Trust uh, Fund and you know, many, many commitments. But we, um, we just think it's great. And it's a great example of how you can build out affordable homes and livable communities. That's the other thing. We don't just call him the Secretary of Housing. He's the Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities. And that is intentional, our naming. So we wanted to be here today to return, um, to share some, some steps that we've taken to make Massachusetts more affordable, more livable for people. And I'm gonna tell you this right now, it is just a start because there is so much more we need to do. But I want you to see the energy and the urgency that we bring to this, okay? And the commitment, and we are all in this together. As I said, affordability. We've got a big time comprehensive affordability agenda. It's about making life more affordable for folks all across this state. That included in our first budget, making school meals, breakfast and lunch, free for every kid in the state. Making sure that we had historic investments in local aid to help manage municipal costs. A few weeks ago then, we did something else that was long overdue. We signed into law a billion dollar tax cut package, the first major tax cuts. We got it done, the first major tax cuts in over 20 years. And I'll tell you why that matters. Because as a result of that tax package, Massachusetts, if you've got a child or a dependent family member at home, you're now gonna have, you're gonna be receiving the most generous, the most generous relief in the entire country, okay? That's really, really important. It's money going back in your pockets, um, and, and we know how important that is. Real money back in real families' pockets. And there's a whole lot more associated with those tax cuts. Um, but again, they were, they were focused on making life more affordable for people who are paying way too much for groceries right now, way too much of the pump, can't afford rent, can't afford mortgages, you know, clothes, you name it. We understand that. And that's why collectively we wanted to make sure we got this done. And I'm proud we got that done. We put a particular focus on reducing housing costs because housing is the single greatest issue facing our state. It is. And, you know, you I don't need to tell you, uh, anyone working here or living here knows, knows what I'm talking about um, and knows the pressure and the strain that families are feeling every day. And, you know, it makes it harder for us as a state. I don't want to see people leaving the state. I don't want to see employers looking to locate elsewhere. Massachusetts, we're, we're just a killer state. We've got so much going for us. But 
this is a problem and we've got to address it. And so that's why making homes more affordable is our charge. In our first state budget, we also added an additional 1,000 new rental vouchers. Uh, we launched the first climate bank in the country that's dedicated solely to affordable housing and preserving affordable housing. I mentioned the tax cuts and the child and family dependent tax credit, most generous in the country. We also doubled the senior circuit breaker. That's a big deal, from 1,200 to 2,400. And that is gonna kick in and mean money back in your pocket, whether you're actually paying rent or paying a mortgage. You're entitled to that relief. So spread the word because you know if the money's there, we wanna make sure that everyone takes advantage of it. We also cut the estate tax to make it easier to pass your home on to your children or to your loved ones. And we also increase the renter's deduction. For homeowners, and especially all you on the Cape, uh, where septic you know, is an issue, I grew up with a septic uh, system uh, in New Hampshire where I grew up, and I know, you know the expense associated with, with that that my parents now face. So we did something, we tripled, we tripled the tax credit that you're gonna get for replacing or repairing your septic system, $18,000, $18,000. And we increased the annual amount claimable to $4,000 per year. Um, you know, we're working with you as a team to deal with the real issues we've got around nitrogen pollution and, you know, all of that. So um, know that that's happening. Um, we also, you know, Secretary Gustis is gonna talk specifically about what we did with the tax package around affordable housing. Um, and it's one of the reasons that more opportunities like Yarmouth Gardens are gonna become possible because of what we just did in the tax package. Um, a few we weeks after that we did the tax package, we filed legislation, then we call it the Affordable Homes Act. Because again, it's about making housing more affordable for people all over this state. It is a $4 billion plan. It is big, but the moment requires it. If we didn't go big on this, we're not gonna get to where we need to be. So it's a $4 billion bond package that will create or preserve 70,000 new homes for low and middle income families in Massachusetts. It's gonna address the, sh the housing shortage and make our state more affordable. It's going to help us meet our climate goals. It's going to empower communities. It's not one size fits all. There's a whole menu of options that communities can select from um, to make things work. And it's also going to create thousands of high paying construction jobs in partnership with the Massachusetts Building Trades. Um, it's got a lot of moving parts, but let me just zoom in on the Cape. Um, there's a homeowner production tax credit, which would create new homeownership opportunities for moderate income households. It supports local capacity with a $175 million investment in our new Housing Works program. These are funds that towns can use to prepare their infrastructure for new homes. And we will repair and modernize over 43,000 units of state-funded public housing around the state. In addition to these investments, the Affordable Homes Act sets forth a landmark collection of policies to keep making homes more affordable. These include tools, tools like empowering our local cities and towns to help their residents and businesses, a local option transfer fee on high dollar sales to fund affordable housing. And I want to recognize Senator Sear for his leadership where is he? I'm right here. Oh. Y'all better be clapping for this. This is a huge deal. Yeah. It is. We heard you. And it's in there. Also, inclusionary zoning by simple majority, making it easier for cities and towns to create mixed income housing. As of right status for accessory dwelling units statewide, this would unblock one of the most low impact community centered forms of new housing that exists in the country. And this is an important one for communities on the Cape. We're proposing to establish a seasonal communities designation. These are, you know, the Cape, we've got this fluctuating level, right, of, of, uh, of housing demand due to the tourism economy, which we love and we also want to big time support as an administration. But we want to take particular look and care at our seasonal communities and make sure that we're giving them what they need for housing tools. So put together, you know, this is an agenda. If you look at our budget, you look at the tax package, and you look at this Affordable Act 
uh, Affordable Homes Act, which we need your help rallying support on. You have the support of these great folks here in the legislature. We just got to get more people on board. Those three things together are all about supercharging affordable housing in the state. We need more affordable housing. You know, whether you're a kid, you know, just graduating from high school, whether you're somebody who's recently graduated from college, whether you're a senior, whether you're looking to downsize, whether you're looking for your first home, you know, all of this is too out of reach for too many people. So this is an effort, and I'm going to be talking about this all day long, every week and every month till we get this done, because it is the number one issue facing not just the Cape, but the number one issue facing this state. Um, and with that, and with that, I want to introduce our fantastic uh, Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus. Thank you. thank you, Governor. And I want to thank all our friends in Yarmouth for hosting us today and really appreciate uh, their hospitality. And I appreciate all the folks here on the Cape whose fingerprints are all over the Affordable Homes Act. Literally, many of the ideas in this piece of legislation come from folks on the Cape. Your advocacy, your thoughtful suggestions, uh, and hopefully you see that this administration listens very carefully, very thoughtfully, and realizes there are some unique challenges here on Cape Cod, and so we need to give you some unique tools in order to meet those challenges. Your let me just start by saying uh, how grateful I am to Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for giving me the honor to serve as uh, Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities. Uh, as the Governor mentioned, we haven't had a Housing Secretary for 30 years. Uh, previously, it was combined with economic development, but clearly the moment demands that somebody be focused uh, exclusively on housing and housing production and meeting this moment. And my charge from the governor could not have been clearer. She said, Mr. Secretary, I want you to come up with a plan. I want you to engage with folks in the communities across the state, find out what we need to do to supercharge housing production in Massachusetts. And we met with about 140 organizations across the state, as I mentioned, many here on Cape Cod, who really inform the ideas, the suggestions, the funding levels that are represented in this historic bill. Uh, and the governor said, we're going to go big, we're going to go bold, because that's what the moment demands. And $4.13 billion, that's big, that's bold. That's more than two and a half times the previous bond bill authorization. Uh, so that's not an incremental increase in the amount of money that will be spent on housing. That is a substantial leap forward in recognizing that's what it demands, whether it be from our public housing infrastructure or the tools, many of the tools which help create these great units here, need to be supercharged if we're going to take this to scale across the Commonwealth. Right now, only 1.6% of housing units are available for sale or rent in Massachusetts. That is the lowest of the 50 states. A healthy housing ecosystem is 4 to 5 percent vacancy. We're less than half of that. That is one indicator of the housing crisis. How many people here know somebody in your family, somebody you work with, somebody that you know who's tried to buy a home and done multiple over-asking uh, offers on that home, waived inspections, done anything and everything and still came up short and haven't had the opportunity to get that home to start their life, to start their ability to build equity and build wealth. Uh, and those people are now turning to other states. They're looking for opportunities to have that dream come true in other places, and we cannot afford as a commonwealth to lose that talent, to lose those people to other states. We need to keep them here to add to our economy, our quality of life. And dealing with this housing crisis head on in a bold way that this bill does really is our opportunity to keep those people here and keep their contributions to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. People are being priced out, and I just explained that. You know this on the Cape, where nearly 50 percent of the workforce has to leave the Cape to go home. That is unbelievably challenging, whether you're a municipal uh, 
town that's trying to have DPW workers and school teachers and folks who can't live in the communities where they work, or it's the hospitality uh, industry that's such an important part of the economy of Cape Cod and people having to live so far away in order to come to work. And often you can't get the workforce you need, and that inhibits the ability uh, to keep those jobs here on the Cape. The Affordable Homes Act represents the most significant housing legislation filed in Massachusetts since 40B more than 50 years ago. But in real terms, the passage of this act will mean more places like Yarmouth Gardens being built. This place is a terrific example of the kind of creative thinking that can give hope to those looking to find affordable living on the Cape. These 40 rental units, all restricted to families earning less than 60% of the area median income, and 12 of the units restricted for extremely low-income families. This is housing that can change people's lives. It's family-friendly, it's convenient, located next to shopping, dining, and recreational opportunities. Kids will have access to a playground and the bus stop and plentiful parking. It's the kind of place that any of us would be proud to call home. And we need a lot more of it. There is a wait list of 450 households for Yarmouth Gardens. That alone underscores how important this work is that we're doing to build more and to build it faster. The governor mentioned the expansion of the low-income housing tax credits from $40 million a year to $60 million a year in the recently signed tax package. <laughs> Yarmouth Gardens is a shining example of the program's money at work. The low-income housing tax credit provided more than $1.3 million in credits in this community. And another $1.8 million was provided by the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. That trust fund, I would mention, is being recommended to be doubled in the governor's affordable housing uh, bill. Doubled. So you want to talk about supercharging, Mary, get ready. You've got a lot more work to do. We've got a lot more dollars coming your way. These low-income housing tax credits that were expand, expanded in the tax relief law uh, bridge the gap to make homes like this possible, and we can't do it alone. The town of Yarmouth, as was mentioned, stepped up in a big way, providing more than $1.3 million in the Barnstable Home Consortium, provided another $350,000 in home funds. That's an incredible example of people coming together for something that's truly beautiful. We know that turning the tide on affordability in Massachusetts is not easy, but we stand here today on this ground and know it can be done, and we are the ones to do it. Thank you. And I want to invite Jim Perini, who's really responsible for this project, the developer, to come forward and say a few words. Thanks, Mr. Secretary, and thanks, Governor Healy, for coming. It's, we're thrilled to have you here, and we're thrilled to be supporting the Affordable Homes Act. Uh, I've got to say, we have a lot of folks here. We have uh, officials, residents, uh, residents of Yarmouth Gardens, residents of uh, Yarmouth and surrounding towns. We have housing advocates, financing people, all kinds of people, staff. Uh, and this is what it took to get this project underway and completed. It was a public-private partnership, but not just a one-two thing. There were dozens, really, of, of, of people. We had, as, as, <clears throat> as has been mentioned, incredible support from the town of Yarmouth, from the people, from the staff, from the select board and the Affordable Housing Trust and the Community Preservation Committee. We had, <clears throat> uh, in, we had support from the county. We had incredible support from the state, particularly the uh, Department of Housing and Livable Communities, where we got tax credits. We, got, we, we were involved in four separate uh, uh, funding programs beyond the tax credits, uh, and the staff there were just amazing and helped us tremendously. But we also had private banks, Citizens Bank. We had uh, Massachusetts Housing Partnership that provided our permanent mortgage. We had MHIC, where Travis uh, Watson is here today from MHIC, who provided the tax credit equity of something like seven or eight million dollars. 
uh, all of which helped us to, to, to build this property. The town, I mean, it just, uh, and, and <clears throat> anyway, I want to say thank you to everybody who was involved. Our, you know, architect, uh, Winslow Architects, Delphi Construction, everybody. Uh, you know, it's not perfect, but it's really good, and we're striving with the help of Can Management, our management company, to uh, uh, to take care of the tweaks and uh, uh, and and get it really zooming along. So, so I want to thank everybody and and repeat the request: uh, the Affordable House, uh, the Affordable Homes Act. We need your help. We need your support. Uh, <clears throat> We, you know, talk to your legislators and your friends and your neighbors. Uh, before I end, I, I also want to say one legislator who's here uh, who had signed, I think, our very first letter of support uh, from, uh, from the state is Senator Sear. Thank you. And thank you to everyone else who, uh, who supported us. And thank you all for coming. And now I'd like to turn it over to Alyssa Magnati who is the CEO of the Housing Assistance Corporation of the Cape. She, they are uh, uh, the regional housing agency for Cape Cod, uh, and they're, they're involved here with, uh, with helping us oversee some of the rental assistance. So, Alyssa. Thank you. And um, I also want to welcome you back, Governor and Secretary, and let you know that here in the room, or uh, here before you, we have several housing advocates and a really good team of people here who can galvanize support. I see Jay Coburn from CDP, Hadley Luddy, Christy Senatori, um, Stephanie Cox, of course, a great housing advocate. So, so many people here who will be able to get out um, and, and help get support. Um, my name is Elisa Magnata. It's one of those, uh, you know, long Italian names with a lot of syllables that people mess up. <laughs> I am the CEO of Housing Assistance Corporation, and I'm standing here before you representing the 6,000 households and individuals who come into our office every year looking for housing. And also the 1,000 households who leave our region every year because they can't find suitable housing. The provisions in the governor's proposed Affordable Homes Act are intentional and strategic. These historic measures meet the moment. They are the perfect antidote to stifle the negative impacts of not having enough housing at the right price for our year-round residents. Our communities, we know this, our communities need more places where families can raise their children. And we need homes where our grandparents can age in place. And we need affordable options so that our workforce can also live in the place that they serve. I have had the privilege of seeing how the Healy-Driscoll administration operates up close. From day one, they convened, they collaborated, and they listened. They understand that the market dynamics in each region of our state need to be considered. We are not the same as Boston or Western Massachusetts. Our three counties that make up Cape Cod, Nantucket, and Martha's Vineyard need tools that are uniquely suited for our region. Thank you. And this administration has delivered. Before us, we have a thoughtful, multifaceted approach that will increase housing production and lower housing costs no matter where you live in the state. This comprehensive and bold package includes tax credits for creation of housing like this, tax cuts for renters and landlords, and a plan for sustainable funding that lives beyond this administration through the transfer fee. A global, and my favorite, a global buy right provision that increases property rights so owners can finally build ADUs without delays coming from their planning boards. These progressive policies reset the trajectory of housing infrastructure in our state. They ensure that each community has the tools it needs to retain the students who graduate from our schools and attract the workforce so that businesses can work at full capacity. Now is our time. We need to stop analyzing the problem and support the governor's bill. Building housing that ensures that the Cape Cod and Islands not only remain a viable vacation destination, but also are, remain 
a thriving year-round community. Thank you. And next up is my colleague, Paul Nizwicki. Thank you, Elisa, from a long Italian name to a long Polish name. Uh, <laughs> on behalf of the 1,200 members of the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce, we want to welcome Governor Healy and Secretary Augustus. Uh, the economy is dependent on affordable and attainable housing. Housing affordability has always been an issue on the Cape. With so much coastline, we have higher than state average land values. With a seasonal economy, we have lower than state average wages. Uh, but the pandemic has pushed us beyond crisis mode as it relates to housing. For the last four years, the business community has dealt with a labor supply shortage that they've never seen before. Uh, and with half of the jobs on the Cape being done by people that don't live on the Cape, and over 25,000 people crossing those bridges every day to come here to support this economy, um, it is essential that we make progress uh, in sort of solving the issues related to this crisis. Uh, it's an economic imperative. So we want to thank the governor um, for the tax cut bill. I mean, it's such a, a, a large and comprehensive package, but it's, it's, more, it's about more than affordability. It's really about sparking economic development, making us more competitive as a region and a state. Uh, so uh, there's, a, su there's such good stuff in there, most of which has already been touched on. We also want to uh, thank her for her efforts in the housing bond bill, uh, especially because it is so specifically tailored in a way that's never happened before to the challenges that we face on the Cape with as of right uh, ADUs and with that seasonal designation. Incredibly important. And I just want to close uh, by reminding everyone how linked the housing issue is to uh, the economy and the labor supply issue and infrastructure, whether it's wastewater or transportation. Uh, so I just want to close my remarks with thanking the governor for her immediate, specific, and strong support of replacing both the Bourne and the Sagamore Bridges. So thank you very much. Governor. And with that, I'll turn it back over to the governor. I'm not the governor. Uh, we had to mess up in the speaking order. Um, glasses on or off. Um, First of all, thank you to the residents of Yarmouth Gardens and the town of Yarmouth for hosting us today. Um, and thank you, Governor, for not only being with us today, but actually sinking your teeth into the challenges we face on Cape Cod. And, and I've, I've, got to, I've got to brag about Governor Maura Healy and Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll and our Housing Secretary, Ed Augustus. So I've worked under two governors, and I've been serving in this position now, hard to believe, I'm the young guy, but seven years. I have never seen a governor and her administration dive headfirst into the challenges that Cape Codders and Islanders face. And this has, been an, this has been an administration that just doesn't come here in the nice months, but has spent an unprecedented amount of time, right, coming with Dylan and I to Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket, and with me and Sarah Peak to Provincetown, and here on the Mid-Cape, time and again, with my partners in Kip and Chris. And they have listened to our needs, and, and they're already delivering on them, right? So in this tax package, including provisions, right, we increase the low-income housing tax credit by 50%, right, that builds more of these projects, so we can have more of these beautiful projects like this all along Route 28 listening to us in the multi-billion dollar challenge we have around wastewater. And yes, saying, hey, look, we got to do our part here to clean up Cape estuaries and embayments, 98% of which are impaired. That's not, not very good when your economy is based on attracting people to a pristine marine environment to recreate, right? But delivering with a tripling of the septic tax credit, sinking their teeth into the challenges of wastewater funding. I spent about 90 minutes with the governor and a number of other municipal leaders, uh, with Senator Moran, talking about wastewater funding. And now in the Affordable Homes Act, we're often, and, I, and I've been doing this work for a little while, often where the needs of the Cape and Islands are seen as quite secondary to that of Boston and Greater Boston. And in this package, listening and hearing us, hearing Islanders on Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket and in Provincetown and in Truro and Wellfleet and Chatham and across the region who are crying out for the ability to have a local option transfer fee on luxury real estate so we can harness the absolutely out of control real estate market we've had and seen particularly post-pandemic and put those dollars to work 
here. The truth of the matter is, and, and, you, you, and, and you can know this, right? If you come with Dylan and I to Nantucket, and I want to give a shout out to Tucker Holland, who's here from Nantucket, from the town of Nantucket. If you come with us to Nantucket, if you come with Dylan and I to Martha's Vineyard, if you come with me to P-Town, we're not just talking about the need to provide housing to those who make below area median income, right? We need to find a way to subsidize housing for people who make 150, 180, 200 percent of area median income. On Nantucket, that's 240 percent of area median income. And currently, there are no state and federal programs that help build workforce housing and seasonal communities. And what the transfer fee is, gives us an ability to generate tens of millions of dollars locally that we can put right back to building and preserving the housing we so desperately need. And so what I need, this is incredible. And what I need from all of you, the governor has had our back on this issue. This is not an easy issue. There are opponents on this issue. What I need from all of you and our municipal friends here, the islands in Nantucket have passed home rules, Chatham's in the house, they've passed a home rule, Truro's in the house, they've passed a home rule. I wanna see home rules on transfer fees, on spring town meeting warrants, across the Cape and Islands showing our support for this policy. I want you all to sink your teeth into the fact that we have got to move housing policy forward. This is not a problem that we can just solve on Beacon Hill, for better or for worse, it's not. The way that land use policy works in Massachusetts is as up to each and every one of us, right? And I see so many municipal leaders here in this audience. And so what we've got to do is do our part in changing our zoning, in building the housing we need, in taking advantage of a transfer fee that the governor's proposed, of the seasonal communities designation the governor's proposed, of working with all of us to bring the resources we need for wastewater infrastructure. Wastewater unlocks our ability to build the housing and preserve the housing we need. And that's sort of my ask of all of you. We have a governor who has spent more time here and is more invested in the needs of hardworking Cape Codders and Islanders than we've ever had before. And I worked for the past two guys. What we now need to do as Cape Codders is to meet that commitment to work with our phenomenal legislative delegation to get these policies over the finish line to bring the resources that we need. I'll just close and say this morning I was um, at Community Connections uh, up the street in Yarmouth. They provide, uh, provide services to people living with developmental disabilities. What's the number one problem? It's housing, right? I met someone, they have someone working for them who's living in their car. Right? I was at my favorite little place in Truro, Salty Market, over the weekend. My favorite person who works there, Rebecca, who's a Jamaican immigrant, right, who's lived on Cape Cod for 25 years. You know what? She's leaving and she's moving to Maryland, right? Because she's like, I'll never have a hope of affording housing. We are at such an inflection point, and I am so encouraged to have a governor and a lieutenant governor and a secretary who not only are listening and here but who are doing the hard political work to move these policies forward. And what we need to do as Cape Codders and Islanders is to join them and keep joining with them and meet this moment and to build and preserve the housing we need so we can have a hope of having a sustainable year-round community. So thank you so much for being here. Governor, thank you again. She's literally the best. Like everything we ask for in this housing bill is in there. It deserves a standing ovation. I'm gonna turn this over. I get the honor of representing this town. Two phenomenal men, Representative Kip Diggs, Representative Chris Flanagan. You're going to hear from them next. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm going to be very short and sweet because everyone has said so much here already. And I'll be honest with you, there's nothing more to say. We just got to keep our governor right here. She got our back. We got her back. Have a great day, you guys. You know, I look at the audience and I see the, the residents and I, I look at this complex and I think that it really symbolizes what is possible when the Commonwealth of Massachusetts partners with a great town like the town of Yarmouth, right? And so I think this, um, this housing bill is going to be fantastic. I'm very, very grateful for the support of Secretary Augustus, our governor and lieutenant governor, and I look forward to seeing what's possible and the continuance of that partnership moving forward. Thank you. No, but you get up, please. Well, it's, it's, Dylan Fernandez. it's not my district. I, I'm Dylan Fernandez. I represent uh, Falmouth, Nantucket in the house. Uh, 
and the vineyard. And look, I, you know, there, I, I'll be brief. Um, lack of affordable housing is eroding our communities at an unsustainable rate where young people, working families, elderly people who want to downsize, there's just no option for them. And so our communities are becoming a shell of themselves because people are leaving. That's profoundly unfair. And I got a call around this time last year, it was November, it was a little colder, um, from someone who was living in a trailer um, in someone's uh, driveway, and uh, there wasn't any heat attached to it. It was getting colder and colder, and they couldn't find housing for her. And she's a, a, a veteran. Um, she's elderly, uh, in her 70s, and she couldn't find a place to live. And so she ended up having to move up to Maine to be with her daughter because she couldn't find housing on, on the Cape, even though she grew up here, spent her entire life here. And that woman was my aunt, you know? And so this really touches us at uh, a really emotional level, and we all know someone who's experienced this. So this legislation, you know, we could talk about the statistics all day. I think uh, at the end of the day, this is about our families, this is about our coworkers, this is about our, our neighbors and supporting them so that they can have a sustainable place to live on the Cape and Islands. So thank you for legislation that meets the moment. All right. Well, we can't top that. It's, uh, it's about the people, as Dylan and, and Julian just said. So thank you, everybody who is here uh, celebrating and support. We need more Yarmouth Gardens. Mm -hmm. We need more housing. And we need your voices in the weeks and the months ahead big time. Thank you so much. Um, I'm happy. Uh, what, do you want a scrum or question? No, question? Question on the podium. OK, does anyone have a question for any of us? Yeah. Well, yeah, let me, let me suppress. Any, any press have questions? Are we? Uh -oh. Okay. No. No. All right, good. Well, then we'll, we'll um, 